<laughs> Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm Dr. Five or Larry Rhodes, and we're recording this on Sunday morning, July 2nd, 2023. As usually, we have our co-host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. It's raining, it's pouring. Yeah, it's continually doing that sorry. these days. Yeah. And guests, we have Dread Pirate Higgs. Welcome. Right, John right. Richards and Boudreaux. Welcome. Hey. The Di- Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, Satanism, Pastafarianism, and oh, the man. sciences. And also we have, we will be talking about religions, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not a, a bet on it. In Knoxville, here in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us, or a lot of us around. We're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, and we'll tell you more about them after the mid-show break. So be sure to stick around. Wombat, what's our topic today? God's raising cats, and we need to stop them because we love cats on this show. Uh, but before we get into that, I'd love to touch into some logical fallacies. And before we get into that, I'd love to have a, a, a fellowship of our newly patronages supported and led by our own Dread Pirate Higgs. Dread. Arr, I could do that. A short one. Remen, oh flying spaghetti monster, grant us the wisdom to resist dogmatism, the courage to question, and the compassion to embrace all those who seek truth. May we ever use our noodly appendages to reach out in friendship and understanding. Raw Raw man. Love it. What the fun thing about Dread is sometimes he logs into my Zoom call to to do his like sermons or whatever, and I'll get a little notification at work and I'll buzz in just to see like what's going on, like who dialed into my show. And then it's just like a really, really nice passive little uplifting sermon. I'm like, this is cool. This is cool. This is a good use of corporate resources. (laughs) <laughs> keep doing it dread you're all right uh dread i wanted to do a quasi double introduction roundtable on a topic on logical fallacies do you have a logical fallacy that you like to bring up yeah actually i've, I've uncovered one and, and because it's it's timely because in british columbia uh, we have a lot of unsettled treaties with uh indigenous peoples there's a lot of different tribes here in British Columbia. Um, And unfortunately, there's an appeal, uh, which is kind of like the naturalistic fallacy, where nature is, you know, everything in nature is good and and all things science are bad. Um, But it's called the indigenous fallacy. And it refers, and I'll just read this out, it refers to a logical fallacy that occurs when a line or an argument or line of reasoning relies on essentializing, generalizing, or stereotyping indigenous peoples or cultures. It involves making unsupported, unjustified assumptions about the beliefs, values, behaviors, or characteristics of indigenous communities or individuals based solely on their indigenous identity. And where it can be employed is, uh, um, uh, it can manifest in various ways, such as appealing to the inherent wisdom or spiritual connected associated with indigenous cultures without providing substantive evidence or logical reasoning to support the argument. It can also involve dismissing opposing views or valid criticism by asserting they come from a non-indigenous perspective and are therefore inherently flawed or illegitimate. Dread, that's a very so, bold thing to say on this show that old people are wrong because uh, I think we right. get voted off the island. Yes, that's right. Yeah, we're not pulling our weight, I guess. Mm-hmm. In a nutshell, that sounds basically like people want to rely on old traditions to do stuff that we already know science has better solutions for. Is that yes. is that unnecessarily curt or accurate? What do you think? You know, I think it's pretty accurate. Um, I mean they employ it a lot when you, you certainly environmental activists do when you talk about putting a pipeline through or the site C dam or or whatever it's 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 not it's not a, a sound 
argument often, you know, it's not based on science or the study of ecology or the impact on the environment. It's just saying uh, this is our traditional hunting ground and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it, it just devolves into, well, this is the way we look at it. Every, everybody else is wrong. Let's get some other ideas. Larry, you made a weird for face when uh, Dredd said everything in nature is good and science is bad as far as describing a viewpoint of those who would use the natural or indigenous fallacy. Uh, I wanted to see well, what you were thinking when you heard yeah, that. I, I, it just kind of struck me as weird because science is at its base of the study of nature. I mm. mean... Oh, uh, we're using the tools of our that we develop through using our intellect to study what makes the world, what makes the universe, what makes right. things that we find in nature. And the great it's thing the is, same. everything that yeah. we use to study that comes from nature. There's nothing right. supernatural about the tools right. of science. So truly, nature, science is just nature looking at itself, mm -hmm. <laughs> thinking <laughs> just, thinking about itself. Yeah. Right, right, right. There's uh, nothing wrong with that. What do you think, John? Well, where this goes wrong is when the manufacturers of products mm. <laughs> propose that they're natural mm. in, in the expectation mm. that that also means good. Mm. Right. But of course, yeah. 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 Nine is natural. <laughs> exactly. <So is> hemlock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, what is it? The, the worst uh, bacteriological poison ever, you know, that one thimble fool could kill. Botulinum. Botulinum. Oh, yeah, botulinus toxin, yeah. yeah. That, uh, a thimble full could kill the entire population of the planet, you know, if, if distributed fairly. <laughs> so uh -huh. what you can't do is equate natural with good. Pujo, I got a question for you. What if your kid said, I don't want to take a shower. My body odor is natural and I, I want to keep it. it I want to stay. I want to stay natural, and they're using that fallacy. What do you think? What do you think? Is that is that cool? Does that fly in your house? I would. I would say, are you spying on me through Alexa or something? Because the kid <laughs> just said. That. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I you know, I would, I, I would try to appeal to to logic and say, mm. you know, uh, uh, you know, your friends are gonna, you know, think you're stinky and. Uh, Oh, that cute girl you're talking to may not social pressure. I love it. You right. have the right. You have the right mechanics in your head. You have the right yeah. deck of cards to play. Though the thing is, we've had that problem. We've had doctors say, "Hey, we've had doctors in the past say, I don't need to wash my hands. I'm just giving birth. There's no right. such thing yeah. as germs, <laughs> right? Oh, uh, you believe in germ yeah. theory? What are you, some sort of like yeah. sanitization specialist? Come on, come on, come on. We're all men here. We're not. We're not yeah. dying from some stuff. Was it you Florence? Know, and, I, and I Florence found Nightingale. actually right. Florence Nightingale. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, and the, there was a big problem here in BC. I'm sure it was around the world, where um, healthcare practitioners, nurses, and stuff like that, who did not believe in the vaccination, felt that they were uh, unfairly uh, punished for for not getting vaccinations and expecting to be working with patients in a hospital. Right. I talk about wow talk about crazy fallacy yeah. and and, yeah. the, and the sad thing is it extends even to today because we've had that of whole vaccination is. issue in in around the world but mostly in the u.s i won't i won't give that i won't give that baggage to the british or <laughs> to the british or canadians canadians in because oh okay. yesterday was canada, yesterday was canada day okay and we had a pretty big flush of people in their big pickup trucks with um f trudeau which is our prime minister uh and stop the mandate and all, freedom and blah 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 so yeah canadians can be pretty i'm sorry up that's trickling own. up that has to be trickling up uh <laughs> yeah. we need a we need to protect canada you guys are our last bastion in case the republicans take office again so <laughs> build a wall <laughs> don't tell them that yeah, don't tell yeah. them that just yet john john love to get your idea on the indigenous fallacy um as a as a representative of a former world global uh, empire, how, 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 what is your take on the idea of, you know, we got to listen to indigenous people. They, they have some points. Well, definitely. definitely we, we went about the world doing good. I mean, if it wasn't for us 
most of the continent of Africa wouldn't have the Bible. We no. gave that to them. It's very true. They made a lot of houses out of it. So it's absolutely important. That and tea, you know. It's... <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, <laughs> guys. Um, I had some, I hope everyone's doing well. I had a weird dream and I, and I bring this up because I was only awake. I was only asleep about 10 minutes ago. And I thought, what a great topic to bring this up. Um, last or early this morning, I woke up with uh, a really great experience. I had my cat in my chest and he's just sleeping, purring, snoring or whatever he does, uh, having a good time. And I'm like, what a great bond that we've got. And I automated automatically made me think, oh, what if I was God? <laughs> and I was yeah, well, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it's just the natural extension of this. Like, what if I was God and my role was to protect care of cats? Like, aren't I doing so much of a better job already compared to like God protecting humans? And I thought that's not fair. My Christian hat guy says that's not fair because God and human mortal are vastly separated compared to human mortal and their pet cat. And I'm like, well, if that's the case, why isn't there a better relationship or a better bond or an actual, you know, connection between us rather than this book and uh, and this idea of a God that I got to reach out to? Shouldn't that be improved if the power difference is improved? Shouldn't it be like we're sitting with God or we have this more direct relationship with God? I didn't want to get into that too much, but I did want to make the analogies of like taking care of pets if I was God and taking the same context that was given to me from the Bible and just changing around some nouns and seeing if that made sense. Uh, before we go into that, John, I saw you raise your hand. What's up? Yeah, well, I've seen your cat. It's yeah. black, isn't yes. it? Yes. You know what that means. It's like me. I'm also black. No, yeah. no, it's like the devil. Black <laughs> He's going to age very well and be very good at, at <laughs> almost any athletic activity. The other thing about cats is mm. You think the cat is your pet, that right. you own it. Right. Wrong. <laughs> right, 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 right. Cats, cats are not pets. Cats have staff. You're, right. It's the boss. Yeah. I, we're our you, best roommates. Yeah, yeah. My food is its food, all that stuff. Yeah. So, so you want to look at it the other way around. It's God. Are you meeting up to its worship enough? You know, humans aren't that different too. There's a lot of humans who would say like, that's my God. You know, they won't say I'm, it's God. You've never heard that. You never hear a Christian say that. You'll always hear, hey, that's my God and my God's an awesome God. It's like, don't you mean yeah, yeah, yeah. you're, you're and, its follower and you are trying to be a very obedient follower. That song doesn't exist. Larry, what do you think? Oh, I was just thinking that you know, you take you take your responsibility of, of taking care of the cat very seriously. Yes. You make you take it to the vet. You know, it, you preemptively take it to the vet, not just when it's hurt. Exactly. You make sure that you don't uh, intentionally hurt it, uh, and, and all of these things. But if you if you read the Bible and you're talking about God, you know, as a pet owner, and right. we're his pets. It says many times that he flatly gave us diseases. Right, you know, and killed us for the tiniest of things. He killed everybody in the world. I, he's not much of a pet owner if you think if you think of it in those terms. Right. Yeah. And follows that up by saying, "You, I love you, and you have to worship me." And here's some diseases yeah. at the same. Yeah, time. yeah. We we have an association for that over here in the UK. It's called the Royal Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Thank you. I reckon God. Yeah, we have up. that here. Yeah, what about a Royal Society for Prevention of Harm to God's Followers? There should probably be like a board <laughs> member for that. That'd be great. Pooja, I'd love to get your opinion on this. Um, as a pet owner, how is God doing? And um, and you have uh, pets. I know that for a fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a dog um, and have had many dogs over the years. But uh, yeah, if looking at through the lens of we're God's pets, how is he doing with us? Yeah. Um, I mean bone cancer in children i mean what, <laughs> right mm -hmm. like and, and he, he unlike us with our pets i mean he can prevent those things and snap right. of a finger I, I suspect. Right. or at least we're told um you know that, that makes me think of the i think it's a hitch quote uh impotent or evil god's either unable to prevent you know disease like that or or doesn't care yeah so yeah pretty almost, lousy almost you know. almost like he's not there at all 
Yeah, no, it would. You could. Uh, you, you. That's exactly how it would work if he didn't now, exist. Now hold on. What if that's intentional? I'm putting on my Christian hat. What if that's intentional? Uh-huh. And he left us oh, to our own devices. Then he's much worse than than a cat owner. He gave us an entire universe. He gave us the seeds in the ground. Like he gave us the air to yeah. breathe. He gave us lungs to breathe the air. Like you, you're not looking at the bigger picture. The way I think of it is like think of well, going back to the cat analogy. Think of it as like a big room that I threw a bunch of cats in and a bunch of canned food for cats and a can opener and i shut the door for 14 million yeah. years and i said yeah. all right they're gonna be okay i gave them all that stuff i gave him the room i gave him a can opener i didn't have to give him a can opener i gave him a can opener okay like think about that that's that's some of love. them will die that's some of them <laughs> some, die. you know some can happen something but they'll figure it out and if i do that enough times one of the times i open up the room 14 billion years later there's going to be a beautiful cat society and i'm going to be like i did that I am so cool. Look at what I made. All those cats owe their lives and existence to me. I demand to be worshipped. And if they don't, I will don't start you know, for eternity. Don't you know that's the, the premise of Cat in uh, Red Dwarf, the, the television series, Red Dwarf? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that, yeah, Lister, yeah. that Lister, you know, put the cat and uh, it, and it eventually uh, over millions of years, it, it became a cat human. And yeah, yes, yeah. it was a pregnant cat that eventually came up with a, <laughs> That's right. a, an evolved human-shaped cat person. And who was super cool. Lister and the cat got so along, it was great. One of the best friendships yeah. on TV. It's really, really great. Yeah. Way sure. more cool than my actual cat, but like also very cat-like in his demeanor at the same time, too. It was great. Great suits also. Where do you get them? I don't know. But um, the idea of like, should I, as a pet owner who locked my pets in a room for for an inordinate amount of time with some food and opened it up and found out they had a whole society and i should be oh great hey you guys are awesome by the way now i'm going back to the creation story i threw in some poison cat food at the same time too and i had like a secret agent cat go and say you should eat this poison cat food and if they eat the poison cat food then i get to be angry at them and i get to punish them because they they sinned against me isn't that great? Isn't that like yeah, that's an great. awesome plan? Like they had, yeah, yeah. I, I, I should make it as easily as possible to eat that canned poison food. And, and they do. Um, yeah. I also, right they're in the middle of the room. Right, right, right. Um, it all falls together. I think this all makes sense. The idea is, why well, am I pulling this up? Um, if when you are exposed to a certain narrative, regardless of how extreme or, or, or untrue it is, let's be, let's be fair. Um, you kind of accept, you turn to accept the untruth of it because it's marketing, it's propaganda, it's how our brains work. If we see a pattern enough times, we begin to rely on it, regardless of whether it's true or not. We, because we, we like consistency more than accuracy. It's one of the faults of human thinking. And when we are exposed to a narrative over and over again, we don't judge it as harshly because we just accept that it's true. But when you take that narrative and you just put it in a different framing, if you say, hey, God taking care of cats in a room versus God taking care of humans in a in a Eden, right? And there's a poison apple versus a poison canned food. You immediately know, why would you give poison? Why would you set these people up for, for, for failure? Why would you put a trap door in paradise? Why would you put a secret agent cat who can communicate with the other cats and say, eat this poison food if you don't want them to eat the poison food? Why would you why would you punish them for something that you were clearly planning to do from the beginning right. and blame them for it? None of that mm. makes sense. Like true, because that's the exact same context of what we have in the Bible. It's one mm. of those situations we just don't really are. I think as atheists, we connect the dots. We can be so yeah. aware of it, yeah. but it's frustrating mm. when you've already indoctrinated yourself with the narrative, not giving yeah. yourself any critical yeah. thoughts. And other people well, won't yeah. see it, just simply won't see it. Right. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and actually, right. part of that is like uh, what they call the outsider test of faith, right? Yes. Is that you're mm-hmm. looking, you actually turn your view on your own beliefs in order to have a an objective perspective. Yes. To, to awesome. evaluate them objectively instead of being comfortably ensconced in them and, and saying, well, you're crazy. I'm not, clearly. Right. You're crazy. You're not. Right. Right. <laughs> Like learn to give and take advice. That's that's the two important things, not just one or the other. Yeah. Boudreau, what do you think? It it made me think, and I don't know if you guys have this feeling as as atheists, but there's there's a, like a a feeling of clarity that I have mm-hmm. in thinking of any of these. It, it, we've had countless conversations like this, pointing out 
odd things in the Bible, strange things, you know, with religion, accidents of birth and all, all the rest of it. To, to, it seems so obvious to, to me looking at from the outside. And it, it feels like my mind's just super clear. And that's one of the things about being an atheist and finally admitting it, you know, at a young age, just kind of like, ah, you know, just, uh, yes. you felt just like, oh, okay, now I don't have to do all this, all these gymnastics in my head to make these yeah. things make sense. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I agree. I agree with Pudro because I've never been indoctrinated with any religion. So I've always looked at these things from a dispassionate point of view. And it seems to me that the stories in the Bible are self-evidently stories. <laughs> they're, they're, they are constructed mm. like you would if you were writing a syndicate mm. series in Hollywood or for Netflix. Or nursery yeah. rhymes. Yeah, yeah. What you want is events. Every so often you've got to have another event, you know? Mm. And so it would be very boring if everything went right. You've got to have the poison apple. You've got to have the flood, you know? Otherwise, who's oh, going to yeah. be interested? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, yeah. the flood's an interesting one. because Yeah, like but all that takes place in the first book. What's left? You know, just a, <laughs> putting a forward a, a bunch of rules. Yeah. Right, right, right. That's why no, does anybody read Beyond Genesis? I don't know. I've read the Bible <laughs> twice, but it's not a fun read. Like, it's like yeah. an action movie where all the action happens at the very beginning it's like a, it's a john it's a, a tarantino movie in reverse all the actions at the beginning and then the rest is just people talking and you're like what's yeah. going on here yeah. there's no yeah. build up it's, you it's know, it, and it the, starts and, with the climax and then you're just like yeah okay, and, and, and the horrible thing about it is that there's no plot development there's no character arc right you know mm -hmm. there's you know jesus yeah. like jesus for instance is the most boring character you can mm. ever conceive of because he doesn't grow, he doesn't change. Yeah. He's just almost like, the, almost like Luke is, Skywalker. The baddest guy there is. <laughs> 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 at, at least no, the no. trilogy yeah. gave him a kind of an arc. I'd appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Well, at least Luke Skywalker had some sort of romantic interest, didn't he? Oh, oh no. yeah. His sister. <laughs> With his sister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I, I, oh, geez, guys, so such a great number of topics. Um, <laughs> The idea of the flood is an interesting story or an interesting parallel because the if we were to take it out of its context, if I go back to my room of cats and I open it up and there's a cat society and they don't know who I am because they haven't seen me in billions of years, the generations that exist. I've heard stories of you. <laughs> maybe, maybe they have their own stories. It's all conflicting. I gave them no right. idea. Uh, well, they change that, over 14 billion them. years. Yeah. And so I say, okay, if they don't want to worship me, instead of me just going to all of them and showing them that I exist, I'm just going to go to my favorite cat one, my favorite cat family, and be like, you need to build a giant, what's the equivalent for a cat? A cat house, a big climbing tree. Build a big climbing go. tree because I'm going to flood this entire room with water and drown all the other cats. And that cat is like, oh, please don't do that. <laughs> but I'm like, oh, no, I got a plan. I got a plan. Get you and your family and get them on here, but also get like one of every other kind of like non-cat animal that's yeah. involved here. Mm -hmm. Put them on this climbing tree because I'm going to drown everybody. It's like, but there are baby cats. There are kids. It's like, I don't care about them. It's just you, just you. Just get them on the cat tree. You'll be all right. And he does that and kills all the other cats. And I'm like, and I'm so happy that I did this. I'm going to give you guys like a nice rainbow color tinsel. I'm going to hang it up on the wall. That's for you guys. Good job. Good job. I killed all the cats except for like this one family and one of every other animal. And here's your reward. Here's our little rainbow tinsel. Yeah, That's yeah. a great story, guys. <laughs> yeah, definitely is, yeah. Well, of course, if, if you were the god of some cats, Mm. That those who followed you would obviously have to think that you are perfect. Oh, oh that's great. That's great. That's great. And think of all the genetic problems you're going to have because of repopulating the entire world with incest in yeah, one yeah. family. And then I'm going to make incest illegal afterwards. I put a little yeah. thing that says incest is okay for a period of time, and then I'll make it illegal again. So just so, and don't eat pork. That's, that's also, that's my pork. It's my food. Yeah. Um, the, the, just the weirdest thing about this is I've had a friend of mine who was a fellow atheist who I, at the time did not know he was an atheist. And at the time I was a Christian and Bujo, you were asking this, this feels so obvious. And in my mind, Christianity felt so obvious when I was yeah, a Christian. Sure. And it was so obvious to the point where I just said anyone who was, who didn't understand was just corrupted or or was misled. And that's why they have all these 
you know, confusions or, or, or seemingly happy freedom. They don't, they're not living the trial that I'm living through because God's given me a test and the apprehensions that I feel, the loops that I have to jump through, that's God's test. It's an affirmation that he does exist. Like all that pressure I put on myself is proof that God is, has his finger on my, on my shoulder and is watching me every day. But when I had my atheist friend at school, this is like in middle school, his name was Joel. And I brought this up a long time ago. Someone asked him, Hey, what's your religion? And he's like, I don't have one. And, and they're like, why don't you have one? He's just like, I'm just doing my own thing. And in my head, I was shocked because I never knew what other atheists look like. That was the first one I met. And it stuck with me. I didn't think at the time, oh, he's right. I didn't think, oh, what a cool guy. I just thought that was an option. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that you could do that. I was just like, huh, that's right. so weird. And so from middle yeah. school to high school to college, um, I met more atheists. And yeah. finally, when I was taking my, my, my ethics classes, I would decide to look at the Bible more critically. And it was just this walkthrough of understanding, okay, I'm not with this religion anymore, but I don't want to call myself the A word, but I have so many good examples of A words that I know, like, and, yeah. and, and I went online and I saw some YouTube videos and realized after getting like a atheist for dummies book that I fall into this category, whether I wanted to or not. And it was just an issue of learning that accepting the, it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The issues that I had with this term was given to me by the people who were religious. Yes. Right. Yes. Nothing with the term itself. Right. Yeah. Yeah, when you're when you're very young in in America, a lot of places, you're raised not to be exposed to the full menu of options that's available to you. Right, yeah. right. You're in your bubble. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, there's a there's an interesting parallel. If I may quickly share it, um, you know, Christians, of course, have framed the whole abortion issue into pro-life and pro-choice. Right. Mm. That's and a false I, I, I had suggested that in order to change that, we just change the framing of it to say pro autonomy and pro ideology. And that would take it out of the Christian hands and put it in the hands of secularists who actually look at it, if they're looking at it from that perspective, in a much more realistic way, because those are the those are the issues at at at, uh, at hand is whether or not people have autonomy or whether they're making choices based on ideology. Let's touch on that when we get back, because I think it actually falls into the indigenous fallacy. And we can... Sure. And Larry, what do you think? Yeah, this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter 5, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's just take a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. They were founded in 2002. We're in our 21st year now and have over 1,000 members. We'll, we have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City, at, not, at the Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables or if it's pretty weather, outside on the deck. You can find us online on Facebook, meetup.com, or just go to our website at knoxvilleatheist.org. You can just Google Knoxville Atheist, just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start one. <laughs> Right. Wombat, where you want to pick up? I want to touch on a really great comment that was sent to us last week by Young Idealist on YouTube. If you have more comments, feel free to leave them on our channels. Um, Young Idealist says, hey, guys, love listening to the show. Critical thinking really needs to be taught and learned well in this world. Something I wanted to run across you that I've been think taking a deep dive into is the psychology of narcissism. Narcissism is a psychological phenomenon that is common among all people. It often contributes to dysfunction and misbehavior and it extremely benefits a lot of people who have an extreme amount of narcissism in their behavior. Among the traits that characterize it is self-entitlement. With studies that have been shown, people who are narcissistic tend to get paid more than those who aren't. And this seems to be pretty powerful in many people. You could see the reason at the same time that people are not being paid what they deserve because of a lack of self-entitlement. I bring this topic up 
Not to suggest in any way how people should be in their personalities, but to look at a lot of the world's problems, especially religion, which is full of self-entitled spiritual leaders who think they have the authority to speak for a tri-omni being. If you think about the charisma and guilt and the overall head trickery that goes into religious propaganda, you should know a thing or two about narcissism. The overlap becomes pretty clear. And I definitely think there's there's a lot of chutzpah in a person that thinks they can speak for uh, for God, right? Like It's like, it's, it's the, it goes back to my uh, analogy of like a cat being like, I speak for that human who <laughs> gave him that door. Allow me to express myself. Meow, 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 meow. It's like, I don't know if this guy is translating me accurately or not, but I don't think this cat speaks for me. What do you think, Larry? Oh, just think about the the chutzpah of the average believer who thinks they're the close personal friend of the creator of the universe who okay. can talk to them and they will grant requests mm. for them. Right, right. Yeah, right. they've got an in. They, uh-huh. They've got an in. Yeah. Well, they uh, can only... They can only say that because nobody can effectively contradict them. You can't make Mm. such silly statements about evidential things, can you? It's only when there's no evidence that you can have beliefs that you can fabricate anything. I mean, having a loving and loyal relationship to Mr. Gravity would be crazy. Right, right. But Boudreau, yeah, they're think, non-falsifiable claims. Boudreau, oh, I think you, you said this, um, that you. which is proposed without evidence can be dismissed yeah. without evidence. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a, on that. It was a hitch quote again. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's that's quote. Again, right? that which can be asserted without Hitch. evidence can be dismissed without evidence. Hitchin's and, razor. And it's not yeah. for us to yeah. find yeah. evidence to counter the claim that someone speaks for God. It's for someone who brings that proposal up because that's shifting Ooh. the burden of proof, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Right. Yeah, definitely. John Richards, you wanted to make a pun. Go for it. You, <laughs> well, it, it, you brought it back in, didn't you, by talking about these uh, these cats? What did you just say? The room you're full of cats. you're, you're their god followers. Yes, <laughs> you're their god, and and uh, you you wanted to treat them properly or, or something like that, as but, biblically uh, accurate as possible. Yes. 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 So well, I want to point out that cats are predators, mm. and if you are forbidding them from eating pork. I'm I'm wondering, does that include guinea pig? <laughs> what, what about what about, what about hamster? Oh, he's got more. He's got more. Should we wait? <laughs> Let's wait. No, no, no. All right, okay, it. okay, 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 perfect. Got it. Um, the idea is we're also we have a body. We can look at our biology, we can understand from other animals in nature what they're capable of and what we're capable of. Yet some of the things that we have and enjoy uh, are sinful by nature. And I always thought, you know, the idea is like um, we have teeth, we can eat meat, but there are some religions that say you can't eat meat, right? Uh, we have, uh, and, and to be as family friendly on YouTube as possible, we have a peg and a hole that are elite, that are sinful to put together, but the, the hole is perfectly shaped for the peg. So like if it was supposed to be illegal, just make the peg or the hole different. Just make the hole like a little smaller. <laughs> you would have solved that problem. Or like put a hook behind it or something, right? Yeah, make it teeth. We already have a whole thing, a holes with teeth. Like we have holes yeah, that absorb yeah, yeah. light. Like you yeah, put it out. Yeah. After all, you can't put petrol in a diesel car. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Okay. We, we're not supposed to look at women's hair so or in some religions uh why then do women have hair like there's just a lot of questions that i have where it's, we could have you could have made things so much more easier and my old my hang up originally is just why do we have two nipples why do men have two nipples we didn't need one you give us an extra one i right. i have no i've i've it's lived my entire course. life i've not had a use for them since i i just don't get it but we have a lot of unnecessary yeah, parts, some of which two, are very simple. Two superfluous nipples. Two superfluous nipples. And and body parts them. that you're not supposed to touch, but feel really good when you do. I don't know. It's very bizarre. Yeah. Larry, what do you think? And and appendix, appendix which can kill you. It right, has yeah. no purpose. Not only that, but teeth in your head that can completely misalign all the other teeth in your in your head and cause you great pain. Uh, there's a lot of weird things going on. But I did want to touch on what Dredd brought up in the first half. Dredd, you brought up... Um, 
the, the, the pro-choice pro-life policy. pro-choice pro-life brought to us oh, by okay. narcissists yeah. brought to us by narcissists narcissistic argumentation and why we are reason why i say that is because it's a dishonest argument it's a false dichotomy to say uh pro-choice or pro-life because you're bringing up two completely unrelated things and putting a one for and against the other when pro-choice or not pro-choice should be a true dichotomy or pro-life or not pro-life that's a true dichotomy right that is there's no middle ground there but when you present pro-choice or 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 pro-life there's a middle ground there that's actually fairly reasonable that we are choosing to or choosing to ignore by virtue of how virtual or uh, volatile the argument has become over time. And yeah. I think those who are it's, in it's, the religious respect prefer to exclude that middle ground because it makes their marketing more palatable, right? Because and, that, and that's why it's been framed. And that's why it's been framed the way it is. Right. If, if if it were framed by secularists, it would be pro autonomy or pro ideology. Because Correct. That really is what it's about. It's not that other choice which makes it all you know pro choice. Well, I'm cho- you're choosing to kill somebody or right. murder somebody. That's you know, and that's you know, and that that framing has stuck as long as it has is the biggest detriment to anybody that is uh, in favor of Roe versus Wade, for instance. They're they're fighting the battle using Christian terminology, Mm -hmm. and that's where the issue really lies. They they need to change and reframe the argument in order to make it much more secular friendly. Mm -hmm. John Richards. My opinion. I I think this is an argument about terminology. But I think the, ter- the terminology that's being used incorrectly is the word baby. Mm. Because, because they like to say that they're saving babies from the moment mm. of conception. They're mm. not yeah. babies. Exactly. They're either embryos in, in the first couple of weeks, maybe seven weeks, or fetuses mm. right up until birth. But it's only after they're born that they're babies. Right. That's why we have the expression babes in arms you've got it it's in your arms and uh, out of all of the conceptions something like four out of six never make it through right. gestation right. so it's, right. a, it's a foolish right. mistake to describe them as having an existence independent of their mother right larry do, so what do uh, what do atheists eat do they eat fetuses embryos or babies Babies are <laughs> we know well that. even in the even in the bible it says that life begins with the first breath well yeah mm-hmm. the, the, the breath of the, life yeah. right? the breath of life that yahweh breathed into that mm-hmm. lump of clay right yeah mm-hmm. I, I, always, I always fall back on the logical absolutes is just a way for me to like know if things are are trying to present themselves to me in a misleading manner and if you were to say the autonomy argument it could be as easily pro-autonomy or anti-autonomy and that's much more clear to me because there's no middle ground there and it's just in the nature in the subject of women's autonomy are you for it or are you against it like that is you can't be halfway on it it's like i am that's right the law of the excluded middle right right exactly just like make the make your variables very clear and then just set it up as for or not for or this or not this and we can and we can work it out but when you bring up two different agents potentially there's a middle ground that we can work towards there might be a way where we can respect people's ideology but not in the sur- not in the disservice of the autonomy of other people right, right. like yeah. that that is a ground that we need to walk on in my mind it's the autonomy that we should prioritize not the ideolo- ideology of those who want to govern over the bodies of other people because that's right. not fair uh Boudreau, hate to throw you under the the hot seat on this one but we're mm-hmm. gonna we're gonna give you we're gonna give you a a, a quick quiz <laughs> Ooh. i didn't study okay <laughs> the i so the idea of um so the idea of narcissistic thinking governing our lives do you have an example that you'd like to present to the 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 board here on how religious narcissism actually affects and impacts your life directly because one of the comments that we do get on the channel is you guys always talk about generalities you guys are always complaining about things going on around the world john richards 
or things that never actually happened to you. You're such crybabies. Tell me something that actually happened to you. Bujo, do you have, as a family man, as, a, as the neighborhood's friendly atheist, do you have an example of religious narcissism actually affecting and impacting you specifically? Huh. Do I? I bet I do. If I dig. Um, um, I do feel like somebody, this is pretty minor, but just to kind of get maybe the thoughts going, and I'm pretty sure somebody tried to pry off my glued on flying spaghetti monster decal on my car <laughs> and broke one of its appendages no, no way. yeah yeah I, I i don't have proof of that uh it's just it's it's on my car and it's missing one of the pieces mm. and i'm pretty sure someone tried to try to pry it off that's some uh, self-entitlement right there what do you think larry well laws affect us daily yeah. uh, in the smallest details and mm. these religious right people and their hubris are casting laws to make everybody which live law to on the... you larry which law on you i see you playing video games and riding your motorcycle and doing whatever you want all day tell me how how big government big religion is on you well let's talk about abortion then i mean it's not really affecting me i don't have babies and I, i'm not at the stage of life where i might but i have female relatives who are they're the religious right are taking away the bodily autonomy that affects me. Mm, okay. Yeah, maybe I'll just piggyback on that and say my example would be my, I feel like my daughter has fewer rights right. than my wife had, you know, mm. at this point. So. Oh, very right. good point. Mm. I, um, I was also reminded of the story that you brought up with the, uh, the coach who came up to your daughter and was like, what's your situation? And religiously, and the daughter's just like, I'm an atheist. What, what's, what's your problem? <laughs> that coach is like, we need to talk about this. Like, no, we don't. <laughs> hey, to be fair, maybe to kind of full circle on it. You remember sure. we, I, I mentioned, and we should get to dread. I know he's being patient. Sure. Um, I'd mentioned we were worried that she was going to be adversely affected by it mm. by starting, you know, playtime and all that. Right. But um, she, she successfully made the top team nice. uh, for the next season. So I feel like, Good. I feel like there's, no issues with that. Deal with it. So now the coach has to deal with the fact that he can't thank God for every win because he's got atheists <laughs> on his team scoring goals for him, making passes. Mm -hmm. That's that'll that'll break him down eventually. Dread, what do you Dread, what do you think? So, well, as you know, I I have been dealing with the ongoing issue of trying to be photographed right. in my official ID wearing my tricorn, my symbol right. of my right. religious affiliation with Pastafarians, and mm -hmm. of course have been stonewalled for. Uh, this is coming up on seven years now. Seven years I've been doing this. Um, the, most the, recent, the, the most recent uh, defeat was in filing a complaint with the BC Ombudsperson, the office, which is, you know, subsidized by the government uh, and taxpayers, um, where they said they found no administrative errors in the application of uh, these policies. And uh, it, it was so glaringly obvious that uh, the person who had been assigned to investigate, to do the pre-investigation, to see whether or not they were gonna even investigate it, decided, had come to a conclusion based on the content of my faith and had decided, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just looking for the facts that will support my conclusion that this is not worth investigating. And so I complained and that person uh, has been reassigned. Nice. <laughs> and I, well, Justice. yes, but this is all under the cover. This is all Very under cool. the cover. So there's a, there's a new guy on it. And I, I actually, I wrote a, a, a lengthy piece and then I consulted chat GPT. Good. And I said, compose a sound legal argument to support my uh, wearing uh, a tri my holy headdress in, in my photograph. And it did it. Yeah, and it was great. amazing. Don't be surprised. Uh, so, so, uh, so anyway, I included those as attachments in my response. And I'm waiting to hear back from this fella. But I've also uh, consulted my, uh, I've also CC'd my minister of uh, the, one of the ministers of the legislative assembly um, for my region. Uh, and I actually, I know this fellow personally, 
a good guy. So he he said, because I told him I had something to talk to him about, and, and he says, well, yeah, write me. So um, I sent him the whole package. So, and I'm now at the, the point of hiring a lawyer. Um, I've got a, a, a very good lawyer. She, she's on the TV all the time for other cases. Like she's the hottest lawyer in Vancouver right now. And she's my lawyer. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, I want to throw out, uh, John Richards, your lifelong atheist, uh, for, former president of the atheist society of basically the world leader of chaos. Um, what so clearly religion has never affected you particularly so personally so yeah you know you're you're completely untouched well what's your problem <laughs> well it's it isn't my problem it's how i observe i'm i'm like the visitor to the zoo you know and right. i don't like to see the animals being abused oh and you I... saw my cat house oh well, yeah 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 i love it yeah <laughs> <laughs> I always so use it as like a zoo for me, for people who have been zoo animals and like mm -hmm. realize they can get out of their cage. It's like an episode of the Twilight Zone where you are mystified that you are at a place where you used to be and you can see people happy there, knowing that they might be happier out. You may you not may not know that, but you do know that whatever confines that they put themselves are of their own design. And you you desperately want them to free themselves to themselves, but they are they are ultimately either blinded or or in a position where they can't due to like the stability of their, their current lifestyle, or want to but lack the tools needed to get out. And you want to be able to help as many people. It's like a deeply empathetic position to put yourself into when you see your friends and loved ones in there. And if I were to say anything that affects me personally, the the how religious narcissism has affected me. Uh, it's black culture is steeped in religious tradition. Yeah. And when you are a black atheist in the U S the number of outlets that you have to go to dramatically decrease. And that goes from older family members who don't have a way to contextualize your problem in a secular fashion or, oh. uh, leaders in your, in your community who often may be religious and will would like to recommend you to their pastor. Or even like um, uh, just the lack of secular representation in black communities is is largely non, uh, at least for when I was growing up, non-existent. I had to work really hard to get in touch with like Mandisa Thomas, from uh, who who runs Black Nonbelievers, and met her a couple of times. Made some in groups with groups on Facebook, but it's a sparse group to find people who think like you who also look like you. And I can't tell you how important it is to have something like that, just for you to feel even less paranoid when you step yeah. out of your religious circles. It's nice to have a community there that understands <laughs> the nature of looking like how you do and also not believing at the same time, too, because there's a lot of assumptions that come with that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, really good I, John. Not only have I never been tainted by religion mm. and look at it as if I'm a zoo visitor, mm. but also... If religion ever does die out, I, there's nothing for me to gain. I mean, what would I report on in Global Atheist News? What, <laughs> oh, where'd all my subscribers go? Where'd all my Patreon yeah, yeah. go? <laughs> <laughs> what would we talk about in views on the news, eh? I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, out yeah. of a job. Oh, yeah. I think Sam Harris would be like, oh, who can I sell my boring audiobooks to? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yes. This would be terrible. Exactly. Why do you think he's boring? He's, he has a very I weird don't, No, I, dread. I don't either. Dread. <laughs> Yeah, I was just going to, you know, we're talking about this religious narcissism. So when I went to the uh, Human Rights Tribunal, um, their response to me was, uh, you, this is a quote, you are a pastafarian, a member of the church, the flying spaghetti monster, which mocks religious beliefs and certain religious practices, unquote. So I put back at this, I said, that is like saying, you are a priest and a member of the Catholic Church, which right. practices pedophilia and buries indigenous children in unmarked graves. Uh, on, so on, I threw that right on back top of in their that, face. Any religion is mocking any other religion by virtue yeah. of the fact that was saying Absolutely. we are the true religion. They're mutually exclusive, yeah. right? Of course. Right? There's that very is. few religions that say our God's true. And by the way, everyone else's God is also true. There's, I so, are pressed to think of anything like that. So it's yeah, non-argument. Imagine religions hijacking other religions. Right. 
<laughs> right. practices right. and, and, and stuff like that happens. <laughs> yeah, well, think about the Easter Bunny, right? Really mm -hmm. There has been yeah, far less death. The Easter Bunny. You don't even have to bring up pedophilia and like um, unmarked yeah. graves. You could just be like, yeah, but like, what do you, Christianity is the practice of telling well, everyone else's God. I want to not slap real, them in the face with it, though. It's mm. monotheism at the end of the day. <laughs> Yep. Have you not gotten that memo? The context is so bizarre. And the fact that someone can write that and, and think they're making a valid point just shows right. how how locked into a certain narrative you can be without that context. Yeah, it's, how, it's how divorced from reality. Right. If I right. said I have a room full of cats and I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily abusing them and someone said you are because I have a room full of dogs and I drowned them all last night and everything was great. And I'm like, you're doing the exact same thing I'm doing. How, how are you... How, are yeah, we yeah. This, how did we get here? How did we get here? Just a lack of context. We need to have the context and we need to have God be a better cat owner. We need to have him involved if he's going to be involved at all. And if not, get out because we are clearly taking care of ourselves. Um, final thoughts, Dread Pirate Higgs. Uh, well, I, I like I said, I'm doing uh, regular sermons for the Pastafarians. And of course, I record this stuff uh, live. So you can come check out my uh, YouTube channel, Mind Pirate. I've been getting quite a few subscriptions, so uh, nice. people, I guess, are liking the content. So, cool. yeah, come check it out. Very cool. Uh, you can find my stuff at Let's Chat uh, on YouTube. Just search Let's Chat. You'll find, you'll see me at the top, and uh, that's also my uh, YouTube name now, too, so at Let's Chat. And uh, I'm also happy to say, hey, uh, um, my commercial came out for, for my company. It has Very good. It was top-notch. Thank you. Thank you. We had some really good social um, work that we've done at our school. Um, I made it a point to not just be a really cool person at our lab, but go out to schools and play disc golf and, and celebrate engineering. Um, these are all exercises in understanding nature, science, engineering, and enjoying the outdoors in my head are three components of the same thing, which is enjoying nature and coming to better terms with it and understanding it at the same time too. You can do all those and they're not at, they're not in, they're not in uh, opposition to each other. You can love the world that you're in and try to understand it. And what science and engineering is, is like the application and the process of understanding it in the most accurate way possible. I find it to be the best tool that we have to understand nature and it's a part of nature too. So don't let people believe that it's a, don't let people persuade you that it's a foreign thing that we have to, uh, be suspicious of it's something we should celebrate it's something we made ourselves and got us here john richard's final points well i just want to advertise that you can see some of our latest stuff on atheism uk channel that's atheism uk channel on, on youtube where we're now posting the videos of the changing minds in changing times event that we staged about a month ago in london Ooh. very good it was it's so good, in fact, that we're doing another one in Birmingham Ooh. in September, featuring Lawrence Krauss again. He's flying over. I love that you're coming That's down to cool. Alabama to do that. That's so good. That's yeah. so great. True, true. I listen to his origins podcast all the time. He's, he's, a, mm. he's a good man. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Boudreaux, I've met him. Worry. Oh, go for it. I have, I've met Lawrence Krauss. Um, uh, uh, also, I wanted to add, did you write the script for the commercial you did uh so that was uh a guy talking to me and it was excerpts from an interview that we were just giving off the top okay. of our heads yeah okay so no no fixed script okay uh, that was just well it was well done uh, oh thank you yeah. if you listen to it you yeah. can hear when i hear that commercial all i hear are the cuts from yeah. different <laughs> questions that he put together so like very good editing on their job to take my rambling and make it seem coherent but that was great <laughs> Uh, uh, I, I don't have anything to check out, but I would will say uh, we went to Holiday World yesterday, which is a, a, a theme park, uh, and a water park, and we rode a bunch of coasters, and it was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, Boudreaux, no spoilers, but I think if you hadn't seen the latest Spider-Man movie, you should go see the latest Spider-Man movie. Uh, All right, catch yourself up. It's a really good family experience, but you you would get meaningful high level thoughts of like nice it'll keep you entertained as an adult and they'll keep the kids entertained as like the kids it's not it's it's a really good movie uh, uh it's it's in the plan uh, I indiana indiana jones, jones. by the way i saw indiana jones yesterday not that great <laughs> <laughs>
I know. We knew. We knew it. We knew it. We knew it. We knew it. We I'm gonna watch it, goal. and I'm gonna love every minute of it. You only get I'm... one. Shame on me yeah. once. <laughs> shame, on me. shame on me twice or something like Indeed. that. You Indeed. fooled me once already. I'm not going back. Uh, Larry Rhodes, uh, we're at the end of the show. It looks like atheism yeah. is yeah. over. Anything you want to say before we all become? Uh-huh. Well, you can find my content at digitalfreethought.com. Uh, there's lots of topic atheist topics there. Be sure to click on the blog button for radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. Hmm. My YouTube channel is at Doubter5, and you can find my book, Atheism, What's It All About, on Amazon. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock here on WOZO Radio. Say bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.